Do you want to sew a dress, a top, or maybe a skirt, but you don't have a sewing machine? Or is it that you have a sewing machine, but you still haven't mastered the curry to use a sewing machine? You don't have a problem. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew with just a thread and a needle. Yes, you heard me, a thread and a needle. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Patricia. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are a returning subscriber or you've been part of this family for quite some time now, thank you so much for coming back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew with a thread and needle. Do you see this dress I'm wearing? This is a dress I made with just a thread and a needle. I did not have a sewing machine. Funny enough, I did have a serger, so I used a serger to finish the seams. However, you don't need a serger. You can use pinking shears, you can use um, the same thread and needle, all you need is patience. You can still sew a dress with just a thread and a needle. For this tutorial, we will need a pair of scissors, fabric of choice, in my case, muslin, a thread, and of course a needle. First, I thread my needle without making a knot. I then go ahead to make my first stitch by going under the fabric and then coming up. Taking my time not to pull the thread through, then I go back to secure that first stitch by making a back stitch. I again back stitch on that same stitch, but this time around I make a new stitch by coming out from a new spot on the same line. Also note that I'm sewing with a 5 seam allowance, which I previously marked. Now all we need to do is to just continue this sequence of backstitching while creating a new stitch and backstitching again until we get to the end of our seam. So the seam is basically going to be a sequence of backstitch, new stitch, backstitch, new stitch again until we get to the end. From this point on, I just continue sewing till I get to the end of the seam. When you turn the back of your stitches, it should look somewhat like this. And when open, it should look like that. When I get to the end of my seam, I back stitch one more time, but this time I don't create a new stitch. I maintain my old stitch and I also don't pull my thread all the way through creating a loop which I pass my needle through to create a knot. I create another knot by creating just a loop and passing my needle through. I gently press my finger on the knot while pulling the thread to get the knot as close as possible to the stitch. I make another knot to make sure our seam is properly secured. When satisfied with my knot, I go ahead to snip my thread with my thread cutting scissors. This is the front of the seam and this is the back of the seam. That's all you need to be able to sew with a thread and a needle, but I thought I would show you a demonstration with other shapes as well. Next is a V-shape, which is mostly seen on necklines. For a V-shape like this, you begin your first stitch just like we previously did by making our first stitch, then a back stitch to secure our stitch, then another back stitch, and again while creating a new stitch. So basically, you backstitch, create a new stitch, backstitch, create a new stitch till we get to the end. While sewing, I ended up with a single strand knot, which usually happens when hand stitching, and especially when you have made your thread too long. When that happens, just cut that away and begin stitching like you will do at the beginning of a new seam making sure you blend the stitch 
seamlessly into the last stitch and then you can continue sewing. For a V-shape however, or for any seam with a corner, you always want to make smaller stitches about one inch to the point or the corner and one inch away from it. Then after that, you can continue with your regular stitch to the end of your seam. As I get to the corner or the point of the V-shape, I backstitch and come up through the point, backstitch one more time on this leg of the V, but this time I come out on the other leg of the V. At the end of my seam, I again backstitch my last stitch without creating a new stitch, making sure I create a loop which I will pass my thread through creating a knot. Next is a curved seam which is mostly seen around the neckline and around the armhole. I basically just do the same backstitching new stitch technique that I've been talking about since the beginning of the video. When I get to the end of the curved seam line, I make my final back stitch without creating a new stitch. I back stitch again while creating a loop and passing my needle through and then I create a loop and then I knot. Sometimes a double back stitch and knot depends on how I feel. I went ahead to create two more shapes as shown here. After our stitches are done, I trim down the seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch. I do same for all the various shapes that I stitched. For our curved seams, I snip into the seam allowance making sure I don't cut through the seam. This allows for a smooth curved seam when turned out just like so. For this convex shaped seam line, I make V shaped snips as it removes excess bulk that occurs when turned to the right side. This is how they look after I was done making all the snips. Finally, I went ahead to press and turn them to the right side as shown here. And that's it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do because it matters. And also, um, make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see from me. This video was a request by one of you. Also, please click the like button. Help, let's help my channel grow. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Bye.